Check. Hello. Hi, Jane. How are you? Very nice to see you. Get up here. Oh, what a gorgeous silk. Whatever it is. Uh, let's see. Can we put it? Just run it up under the belt, and that'll secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking. Well, it just belt okay, around. Okay. Belt around. Yeah. yeah. want to welcome you to Dallas, your 22nd city on this <laughs> tour. That is incredible. But it says something about you, and it says something about the book. I've read the book. I'm, I'm still reading it, as a matter of fact, um, and enjoying it very much. Wonderful background on your career in the films and your life and so forth. So um, uh, I think it says something great for you. I'm wondering. Uh, with all the focus on you and the book, Jane, uh, has it brought about some some career opportunities as far as uh, acting jobs? Oh, yeah, a couple. I'm uh, I'm just thinking it over. I don't I don't want to get into anything that's too much. You know, I I haven't worked for ten years, and uh, except for Yellow Rose, a couple of segments in that. And I don't want to get into anything that would take me all day and, you know, into the night and have no home life at all. I like staying home much too much. Can't blame you for that. Yes. Okay. Bob. Thank you. Okay. Is there All right. Uh, of course, the uh, cover on the book here, which we'll take a shot of later, Jane, is the famous outlaw publicity yeah. picture. And uh, I'm sure that, uh, that they wouldn't have stood for anything else to be on the cover. But let's talk a little bit about when they made this photograph. Uh, what do you remember about this photo session? I went into George Harrell's studio, and I, he's well known for all his glamour shots, you know, and I thought it was going to be something like that, and when I got there, here was a pile of hay. <laughs> so it was just some more of the outlaw. I think she looks like a poor, sick little calf, and uh, I didn't want it on the cover at all, but I lost. When it first came out, did you think it was wonderful, or did you not like it then either? Oh, you know, it was a, a publicity picture for a picture, and that's a lot of what the picture was about. But I didn't think it was going to haunt me for the next 40 years. What about the movie itself? It continues to haunt you. How did you feel about that when you saw the finished product up there on the screen? I thought it was pretty slow. Slow? And, yeah. It was... Uh, you know, they took, there was a great deal of time, movements were slow and all of that. And uh, I didn't really know how I was ever going to get another part after that. Because uh, nothing in the picture shocked me. Uh, there was nothing in the picture that I wouldn't have done in real life at all. And so I was very amazed at the publicity campaign and uh, all the uproar that happened afterward. But it was a successful picture. Yeah, it finally made money because it was held up for about five years arguing over when cleavage shot, you know. And everybody was so curious that they had to see it, whether no matter what anybody had said about it. Another picture, of course, that, um, that I remember enjoying very, very much and still like to see it on television, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Oh, well, that was my favorite. I'm glad to hear that, because yeah. that, that's an entertaining picture. Well, and it was the most professionally done from beginning to end, I think. It was had Ho Howard Hawks, the director, that he had actually started The Outlaw. And then he and Hughes had a disagreement. So when he left that, he said, don't worry about it, kids. He said, we'll work together again one day. And uh, I finally got to work with him in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. But he tried to borrow Jack Butel for Red River, the part that made Montgomery Clift. 
and uh, Hawk, uh, Hughes wouldn't loan him. So that was a very bad break for poor old Jack. And it launched Montgomery Cliff's Absolutely. career. Absolutely. I mean, we might not have had Montgomery Cliff, but right. isn't, that, yeah. isn't that interesting? Um, in working with Marilyn Monroe, I know in reading your book, you say that all that stuff that the studios or the media people tried to hype a feud between you and Marilyn no. was not true at all. Not at all. We got along very well. And as a matter of fact, Jane, you must have been a special friend to her, were you not? From things I, I reading between the lines in the book. Well, I don't know. We didn't get to know each other that well, but we were there every day on the set. And uh, when I found out that she was a little nervous about going out on the set, I'd stop by her dressing room and, you know, say, "Come on, Blondel, it's time to go. We're due," you know. And she'd say, "Oh." Oh, all right, Jane, and then she'd get up and we'd trot on the set together. She, she worked very hard. She always knew her lines and was absolutely determined to get ahead. But then what are all those stories about interminable delays that she would cause? I don't know. That was way later, much later. This was her first big starring role in her first big dressing room on the lot. and. Uh, she did look to her coach a lot, and she worked with her coach after the full day shooting when I, I couldn't think of anything. We'd go home and eat and crash, you know. She'd go and work. She was really determined. And, uh, of course, Howard Hawks would see her look to the coach immediately after a take, and he, would have, he wasn't having any of that, so he finally had the coach put off the set. And she got a little unhappy about that, but she was very sensitive and much brighter than people thought she was. You know, I've thought so many times, Jane, because I've covered films and actors and actresses for a good many years, and I've, I've wondered why it is that a, a person like yourself now, you've been able to cope with everything that's come along in your life, professionally and personally, and then you take somebody like Marilyn, who couldn't cope and it ultimately became, you know, just yeah. overcame her. Do you have any theories on that? Well, I know in my own case, I was home. I didn't have to leave home and then go to Hollywood. I lived across the hills. I was only half an hour away. And we saw people from studios all around. It was a way of life there. And I had my four brothers and my mom and all my old same old, you know, high school friends. And my life was, didn't change that radically. And I, uh, I think that's a very important thing to have that, you know, that home base. And when you have, uh, when you're up, it's great. And when you have a tough time, they're there for support. And I think that's very important. I think that's one of the reasons that I, you know, I'm so hep on adoption because I think everybody needs to have a home base. And that's what Marilyn did not have. Yeah. And she kind of went from one group to another group to another group, you know, and she didn't, uh, I don't think she had very many really old buddies. Were you able to keep up with her through the years? No. Um, I don't think Marilyn kept up with too many people at all. She kind of whichever, whoever was managing or running the show at the time, she spent all her time with them. And uh, that may have contributed to the problem, too. I think so. Of insecurity. Yeah. Which is basically, sure. I guess, what because it was. Because then you're totally alone. Yeah. Um, she did call when we made Gentlemen Marry Brunettes after that. Um, Jean Crane and I were in New York doing publicity, and she had her secretary call and say if there was anything that she could do, she was there to help. And, and uh, so it was friendly, but we just weren't in touch, really. Okay. One last question about Hot Blood. This is a movie that apparently you didn't want to do, right? Well, I didn't mind doing the picture, and I'd always wanted to work with Nick Ray. 
because I thought he was a, not your stereotype director at all, and he was a very good friend. But I had done about four pictures, one right after the other before that, and I was exhausted. And I think it's a great mistake when studios try to do that. You know, when they try to make that, that one more picture, when the person is just really tired, and so I couldn't get enthused about it. My two brothers are in it. Um, my youngest brother, Wally, plays the, uh, the right-hand man of the Gypsy King. And my brother Jamie plays my own brother in the film, and he's the lout. He looked a lot like uh, Cornell Wilde, and so when he, he'd come on the set, Cornell would say, "Get him off the set right now." <laughs> <laughs> he just looked like a younger Cornell Wilde. <laughs> so Nick put a great big scar on his face and pulled his hair all down and said, "I want you to be a real grump for this haul. You're a lout." <laughs> <laughs> Jamie loved it. Jane, 50 years from now or whenever, what do you want to be remembered for? Or how do you want to be remembered? Farmer Brown, <laughs> who wears flat shoes and loves the Lord. You think of yourself as, as a farmer, farm girl? Farm Brown, Farmer Brown. Very practical, you know, very, uh, I like very little nonsense. Just get on with it, let's get something accomplished and enjoy, you know, what, what the Lord has given us and how much He loves us. But you know always people are going to refer to the outlaw. That's and their problem, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't top that quote. That's beautiful. Jane, thank you very much for this time, and uh, I hope that you get off the road soon. And get I do, too. And enjoy <laughs> your nice home and your husband. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> We just did two different places. Uh -huh. And after that, he just said, if you don't want to work anymore, you don't have to. And I went, wonderful. <laughs> so I haven't worked since then. And you really haven't cared. You yeah. haven't missed it. Or that was 75. Yeah, That's 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the I've main been thing painting, and you know, then this crazy thing took up a lot yeah. of time. And did somebody ask you to do this, or did you think? Oh, yeah, way back in 76, they said yeah. you had very different kind of life and interesting career and you ought to put it in a book and well, I, I thought I think about it are. and I thought well the only reason that I would want to write a book is to you know show really what the Lord's done in my life and so that's why I had to go into all those dark corners that I did because it was that's how he got me out mm. and back on the path every time. Well, that's been uh, an influence in your life that apparently Marilyn didn't have either, did she? No. See, see, I'm, I'm very much oriented that way. That I think, you know, that has to be a, an important part of one's yeah. life. Yeah, I think it does. Well, I mean, it has to be for me anyway. Hers but, was, you know, kindness and do unto others yeah. and that and kind of thing. And that's wonderful. That's great. That, but, uh, but I think there has to be more. All right? Okay. All right, Jane, uh, we'll let you go, and then he'll just do a, a, some reverses of me if you want okay. to get your food. What do you remember about making that photograph? Do that one more time. What do you remember about making that photograph? When you saw the picture, what did you think? When the outlaw was completed and you saw it for the first time on the screen, what were your reactions? But the picture was successful, wasn't it? Okay. Oops, okay. What about gentlemen prefer blondes? 
you deny all that publicity feud that you and Marilyn were supposed to have had. Weren't you kind of a special friend to Marilyn? How do you explain the fact that some people like yourself, who have all kinds of ups and downs in their lives and their careers, are able to cope and keep going, and then people like Marilyn are just totally devastated by it and have a tragic ending? I said, when you come to your right just a hair. This way? No, you were looking the right way, just laterally. Just leaning. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Too much. I get too much. There? Still too much. Right there. There? Right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. Do that one over? Uh-huh. You would make me do the long one over, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Jane, how do you explain the fact that some people, like yourself, with ups and downs in their careers and their personal lives, are able to cope and go on in Hollywood, and then someone like Marilyn Monroe is just devastated by Hollywood? Why didn't you want to do Hot Blood? Jane, how do you ultimately want to be remembered? Okay, are you rolling? That ought to do it, don't you think? Yeah. 